When I first met Richard Donner, he was known as the macho director of Superman and the Old Man, and not to mention numerous TV westerns and cop shows. So it was kind of ironic, but unbelievably lucky, that the movie that brought us together was this lush, romantic fantasy. And even more ironic that it was the love story that attracted Dick and me to the script. Little did we know that the project was going to provide us with our own love story. Um, I have to thank Alan Ladd Jr. because I was just a nobody producer. I had done a TV movie, which was well received, um, <laughs> and Mr. Mom, but you know, I couldn't get to Dick Donner, so uh, thank you. So um, Laddie got the script to Dick Donner. So we started, now we're going, right? And uh, we start prepping Lady Hawk in 1981 in Soviet controlled Czechoslovakia. And uh, this is where Dick and I started our friendship. Um, I was this, you know, I was this young female producer, and um, I got to say that m many of the other men were just simply trying to push me out of the room, and I fought back because that's my nature. But you know who had my back? Dick Donner, and he was, which is really not surprising. If you know Dick, he is the defender of the underdog. So I was fighting, but I had, yes, he is. So I was fighting to stay in there, but I had the 800-pound gorilla behind me, ha <laughs> ha. As for Czechoslovakia, so they had really beautiful castles, but this was pre-detente, and ultimately we just found it too difficult to shoot there. So we go back to California, and we're working on the script. Dick has our, us conduct our meetings, where else? By the pool, with Dick in the pool. So privately before, and I don't even know if you know this, Dick, I forbade the writers to go in the pool. I said, well, you don't go in there until the meeting is over. And so <laughs> when we were, because Dick was easily distracted. If you know Dick, you know that. Um, uh, ultimately, the great Tom Mankiewicz rewrote the script, and we had our movie to make. So after Czechoslovakia, it didn't work out, and uh, Dick went off to direct the toy. We looked elsewhere in the world. We came up with Italy. In 1983, saw us returning and prepping, and this time in Rome. So here's just a few tidbits. We wanted Mick Jagger to play the bishop, but Fox wouldn't let us hire him. We hired the great John Wood instead, which was just fine. Kurt Russell was supposed to play Navarre, but he missed Goldie, and uh, Rugger Howard filled those shoes. Um, since we were in Rome already, um, we needed an Isabeau. Michelle Pfeiffer self-taped her audition with this little-known actor, Kevin Costner, uh, reading the role that the wonderful Matthew Broderick finally played. Um, and at the end of the audition, she said, okay, Dick, I have an idea of what Lady Hawk looks like. So the, cam the camera goes black, open up. There's the chair, and there's a little parakeet sitting on the chair <laughs> with Michelle's voice. And because she had a sense of humor, Dick said, that's the one. That's... So um, we also got to work with the amazing Leo Kern. And um, a lot of you who've worked with Dick know that he also always casts his friends and family. So the fabulous Steve Kane, who's here today, and who you saw played the bishop's guard. Of course, he's credited as Stefano Horwitzo in, in the credits, thanks to Dick. So um, during the final weeks of prep, my then husband and I were having serious problems. And two weeks into filming, we were divorcing. I was devastated, and my friend Dick Donner comforted me. First thing he did was throw me into his pool with all my clothes on. <laughs> and let me just stop right there and say that during the 1981 prep, Dick shared his enormous house on Cheney Walk in London with me. And there I witnessed firsthand the amount of women chasing Richard Donner. <laughs> and it was mind-boggling. And I already decided right then and there I could never be with a man like that. Ha! <laughs> so now we're in Rome two years later. And after comforting me about Mark, my husband, he swooped in. <laughs> and I couldn't resist. Um, but I didn't want anybody to know. Because, uh, you know, it was tough being a female. I was 33, and uh, I was trying to get respect, and I didn't want to be sleeping with the director. So we snuck around, which was kind of really exciting, and I think, you know, <laughs> sort of helped things out. All right, so enough about us. Back to Rome. The great Vittorio Storaro 
was to be our cinematographer. And for me, it was the first time I witnessed firsthand the visual prepping of a movie with movie greats. Vittorio showed us for hours his images for the movie, from Isabel Blue from Disney movies to Caravaggio lighting for the nights. I learned so much from Dick that year. I learned that, I learned and I took with me uh, key secrets about how to work with actors. For example, okay, we were gonna shoot a scene in the, and we we're setting up for these beautiful woods, but they were a little dark, so Victoria was setting up the lights. Um, but it was scripted, the location was scripted as exterior open field. And one actor came to Dick and said that he couldn't shoot the scene in that location because it was written in an open field, he just couldn't perform the scene there. I'm getting angry of course. But Dick, I watched him very patiently understand that it was the scene itself that was bothering the actor, not the location. And I saw Dick work with him and find an understanding and understand that the actors need to be assured. And therefore, after that, it all went smoothly and the scene came out great. Uh, we had a few problems with the wolf. Michelle Pfeiffer was not allowed to walk with it, which we didn't know. But so once we started filming, it was the wolf trainer, who was about 70 found, 75 pounds heavier than Michelle, um, who you see from behind with the wolf, hence the long black cloak. And uh, the, claw, the hawk on Rugger's arm would smack Rugger in the face every time he'd say a line. <laughs> While the horse underneath them, which was not a trained movie horse, it was a different, it was like a show horse, would go from side to side, go side to side. Anyway, I could go on forever about the experience of Dick directing. He keeps a super happy set. He pumps everybody up when he goes hip hop, hip hop, hip hop. And then he sets an example with his own indomitable energy. He'd walk on the set and yell, why am I always waiting? And, but, you know, he was so experienced, he knew everybody's job and appreciated them and encouraged them to give him ideas and enable them to do their best. And let me tell you, Dick Donner directing is truly the sexiest man alive. <laughs> truly, he should be on the cover of People magazine. Over the years, I've realized that 99% of the time, I believe that the director's personality gets on the screen. And that is how I hire directors. And if you look at Dick's movies, Dick is fun, larger than life, loud, strong, with a big, mushy heart. So I will tell you that not a day goes by that his infectious, booming laughter doesn't make me and everybody around me smile. His confidence, his fearlessness, his humor are what make people adore him and has wrapped around me like a protective cloak. Suffice it to say that the combination of learning movie making from Richard Donner and falling in love with him has made me personally and professionally a better producer and a happier, loving person. In many ways, Lady Hawk is our own kind of personal love story. I'm the Hawk and Dick's the Wolf. For personal and professional reasons, I didn't really think that we could be together, but fortunately the spell was broken and we've been together 34 years. <laughs>